Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Drop Scream Zero in the 15 minute pool on ICC. Drop Scream Zero opens with E4. Let's play the Carol Con with C6. This is an opening that when I took the very unscientific chess personality quiz the other day, it recommended that I play. <laughs> so let's give it a shot. I'm not reading into the quiz too much, but this is an interesting line, and I'm familiar with the structures based on my experience in the Scandinavian. Oh, and he says in the chat, he says, unfair, LOL. <laughs> I'll just tell, tell him good luck. Must be a viewer. So I'll play knight d7. This is a solid line for black where you prepare knight gf6. Bishop f5 is more popular, but knight d7, knight d7 is uh, reliable and Check. Uh, it's a favorite of Karpov's. He had a very good score with this. And as you can see, I think we're now we're going to get a position reminiscent of a Scandinavian. I'll be trying to get the light square bishop outside the chain and then play e6. So here I think I'll just play bishop f5. Could play bishop g4 as well. Often there's a debate where to put the bishop in Scandinavian or Karo structures. I generally won't play bishop g4 unless I know I'm getting significant pressure on d4. Or I'm willing to trade the light square bishop for the knight. Otherwise f5 should be preferred because... There's no good reason in a case like this to trade that light square bishop for the knight. I could just be seating the bishop pair. I want to make white work to get my light square bishop. So bishop g5, decent move. Probably bishop e7 I should play. Yeah, c3. Compared to a Scandinavian structure, uh, white does not have a knight on c3. In the Scandinavian white, very often has a knight there. And that can impede that C pawn and make it harder for them to attack in the center. So they don't have that issue. The trouble for white is finding a plan in these positions because black is so solidly placed with this light square restriction structure. You'll sometimes see it referred to as that, pawns on E6, C6. It's hard for them to arrange any advance in the center. Like arranging D5 is nearly impossible for white. So they should look to use these queenside pawns. That's the key for white. If they can start activating with moves like b4, a4, b5, or a5, yeah, a4 is kind of the right idea. Usually I play a5 in response to this move. I probably will in this case too. I don't want to let white's pawns get a bit further advanced. For instance, if I allow white to play a5, they're kind of encroaching on my position. It may be hard for me to uh, stop them once they have that momentum. Yeah, so let's just go a5. For me too, it may be hard to adopt a plan. I'm kind of going to sit back and wait a bit and see how white comes at me here. Very likely there will be exchanges. Like it wouldn't be out of the question for two sets of minor pieces to come off the board. Like say white plays knight e5 right now. I might play knight e7, and then we could have a trade of the dark square bishops on e7, and then a trade of the knights on d7. Queen b3 makes sense, it hits the pawn. I could play queen c7, I could play rook b8. In some instances, I may allow queen takes b7, hoping to play rook b8 and counterattack, hit that pawn on b2. I don't think this is one of them where I would do that, but it's an idea. So if queen c7, I think knight e5 will be the answer. And I guess I can play knight d5 against that. Look to swap the dark square bishops. So maybe I shouldn't be too concerned. Yeah, let's play queen c7. Just connect the rooks together. Rook b8 was the other move I was considering. Note that d7 would be an inferior square because white can play knight e5 with tempo on my queen. Let's take a look at my opponent's stats while we have a moment. So peak rating of 1949. Over 515 minute games played by drop scream zero. I'll be curious what they do because I have a lot of experience in these structures and oftentimes I found my opponents kind of uh, start squirming around and don't come up with anything uh, constructive once they reach a position like this. 
because white's pieces seemingly occupy good squares, I guess they could try to centralize their rooks. But uh, the pawn breaks are few and far between, and um, this move is probably a good idea. Knight e5, as I was describing earlier. I don't think I want to allow bishop f4. Maybe I could just play bishop d6 in response to that, but I'm thinking knight d5 might be the way to go. Just to discourage bishop f4 and maybe look for a trade of the dark square bishops. Yeah, let's play knight d5. And if white takes it, maybe I'll have access to the f4 square in the future with my knight. Originally, I was thinking bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, with the idea of going knight g6, but now I'm considering just taking with the queen and leaving my knight on the d5 square. It's nicely placed there. If white ever plays c4, I can play knight to b4. Probably they'll play bishop f3 and look to pressure d5 and maybe just the queen side in general. Hmm. So if queen takes e7, bishop f3, let's say, maybe just rook f d8. Thing is, if I take with the queen, I would probably have to be comfortable with leaving this knight on e5, like tolerating that white knight on e5 for the foreseeable future, because it'll be hard to exchange it, and playing f6 is not too appetizing. That weakens e6, and that's a move you usually want to avoid. Hmm. Knight takes e7, idea knight g6. What if they play knight takes e7 and then something prophylactic like g3? That way if knight g6 may be knight to c4, I guess I have bishop h3 in those cases. I think the key for white will be avoiding a knight trade. I think a knight trade would benefit black somewhat. Hmm. Let's take with the knight. I could have spent a little more time pondering, but as I've discussed before in these 15 minute games, when you have a close decision between two moves and you've thought about it a little bit, and you're not, still not sure, you just gotta go with one. I'm not sure that taking another one or two minutes would have clarified that choice for me. So best just to bank the time and get on with the game. White could get ultra aggressive here if they wanted. They could play like G4, Bishop G6, F4. But I don't think that's a good idea. In fact, I'd probably welcome that because it would give me some counterplay. I could use a little rope-a-dope strategy. <laughs> you know, lure their pawns forward and then exploit the weaknesses in the pawn's wake later. Knight c4, okay. That was a move I thought that I might get them to play by playing knight g6. So the fact that they played that willingly is sort of nice, I think. Nice for me. Don't know if it'll make a huge difference. Maybe bishop e4 looking to play bishop d5? Looks annoying at the very least. I wonder if their idea is bishop e4, queen b6, just to get the queen into b6. Can we swap queens? Knight takes. I might have some trouble with this pawn in the future, huh? That could be their plan. Maybe I'll go knight d5. I'm going to play knight d5 and cover the b6 square. And I have an idea. If they play bishop f3, I'll play bishop d3. Attacking the rook and also hitting the knight. I'm actually willing to trade either of my minor pieces for that white knight. That piece has more potential than their light square bishop. And it's almost purely based on the pawn structure and that judgment. Because that light square bishop, it's always going to be hitting against my pawns that are arranged predominantly on light squares, especially e6, c6, b7. So I feel like if I can get that bishop, then I can maybe start trying to outplay them. This is a good move. I think he covers d3 well with that move. Rook fd8 comes to mind. Knight f4 comes to mind. On knight f4, bishop f3, do I have a follow-up? 
It's also just knight f4, bishop f1. It's pretty safe looking. I think I should move a rook. Rook fd8 or rook ad8. Kind of leaning rook fd8. Yeah, let's play rook fd8. I think this is a safe position for both sides. I don't see too much that white has to be worried about. I feel like this is a position that the superior player will win with either color. You could give a higher rated player white or black and they'd probably find a way to outplay you, assuming you're low rated. Not say I'm saying I'm going to do that to you, drop scream zero, but <laughs> that's one of the ways I can summarize this position. If you were to run this through an engine, I bet it will say that white is a very tiny bit better. Let's say maybe one-tenth of a pawn, almost nothing. I think the engine will like white's minimal space advantage, like having that pawn on d4. Hmm. So rook c1. So now if I play knight f4, bishop f3, knight d3 could be somewhat menacing. I mean, it is just an attack on the rook, but... Maybe that will scare them. Still not sure about knight f4, bishop f1, though. I don't really see anything going on there. Okay, let's just play a useful move, h6. This is the sort of move that is good to make when you're not sure how to proceed. You don't see a clear way forward. You know the position doesn't hold any danger for you at the moment. Uh, you can just play a constructive move. And making sure that your king... Does not have to worry about a back rank issue later on. That's a constructive decision. You might look back on that and say, huh, I was really glad that I played h6 in the middle game. If I were white, I would probably play g3. I think g3 is a good move. Just control the f4 square. Doesn't give much away by playing g3. Looks fine. Maybe next I'll play rook a b8 and try to menace b5. I wonder if threatening to push the pawn to b5 will rattle white at all. Could be a case where the threat is stronger than the execution. But you never know. Okay, bishop f3. How do I feel about that trade? I'm not sure. Hmm. So say I continue rook a b8, bishop takes d5. I'm probably taking with one of my pawns. I don't think there would be much wrong with e takes d5 in that case. Yeah, that would be totally fine. Okay. If you want to take it, go ahead. Drop scream zero. I had a rather lackluster blitz game yesterday. And I feel better today. I think it was a little bit low energy yesterday. But I feel good playing this early evening on Sunday. I got a lot of non-chess work done today. So hopefully I can squeeze drop, drop scream zero for the win. It's hard to say his name. <laughs> knight e3. So does he want to trade the knight for the bishop? I don't think I want to initiate a trade on e3 because they take back and then they have a more powerful center. So I think just bishop g6 is good. Yeah. Let's let them figure out which way they want to capture on d5, if any. If knight takes, I might take with the c-pawn in a bid to unbalance the position ever so slightly. Then we have a structure where black might try to go for a minority attack, like arranging b5. Unfortunately, I think that'll be pretty tough for me to do when I've already played a5 and white has a pawn on a4. They would be controlling that square multiple times. I still might play it just to unbalance it, as I was saying, but 
I wouldn't expect much out of it. I don't think the assessment is going to change much from equality. Time is roughly equal. No issues for either side. Because if E takes, white's just going to occupy the E file. The position's almost dead equal. There's really nothing to go by. So let's take this way. Maybe later on, even if white stops b5, maybe I can play f6 and bishop f7 and advance e5. That's a plan. I do restrict white's pawns on this wing kind of nicely, so there is that. I could play rook d6 and maybe try to bother them with rook b6. But it's not a big deal. They can always put their bishop in on b5. Maybe queen f4, but queen f4, I gotta watch out for queen 2. b6. Maybe pawn b6 to start. Yeah, let's play pawn b6. Just defend the b pawn a little easier. Bishop b5, that move doesn't do much, but it's consistent. I was really thinking queen f4. How about queen f4, g3, queen f3? Doesn't do much, but looks like it might bother white just a tiny bit. That's what I'd like to do. And then maybe I can play h5, h4, possibly. Okay, we'll send the queen in. I like the fact that white's queen has a hard time joining the action, because for the moment it can't go to c2 thanks to this bishop. I'm going to leave the f6 e5 plan on the table for a little while. I just don't know if I'm going to go for that, so... Rook f1, that seems excessively cautious. I think the idea is to try to recycle the queen, queen d1, but I don't know why they didn't play rook e1. What if I play e5? e5, d, e, queen takes, maybe go for d4. We're going to be liquidating pretty quickly there. h5, I could try to gain a bit of space on that wing. h5 is interesting in that sense. So if e5, d, e, queen takes, let's say rook e1, queen f6, rook d1. Yeah, we're not working with much there, once again. h5, h5, maybe just g3. Creates a couple weaknesses for them, but maybe nothing too special. e5, d, e, queen takes, rook e1, queen f6, rook d1, d4, e takes d4, rook takes d4, rook takes d4, queen takes d4. They can get the rook into e7, but that doesn't do anything. Spending a little time, but I want to I wanna get this right. Rook bc8 is another move I could try. Doesn't do much. Bishop h5. Bishop h5 stops queen d1, but it allows other stuff. Okay, I'm going to try for e5. We'll just break three. Break free here. I think the plan involving f6 and e5 was pretty slow, so we'll try to do it this way. And there's no guarantees that f6, e5 would even be good. The only thing I don't like about this decision is that I took a long time to make it, 
and it's leading to more forcing play, which theoretically should um, be in the favor of the lower rated player. Lower rated players generally benefit more from forcing sequences than their higher rated opponents. Makes sense, right? If you're just playing forcing moves, you don't have a chance to outplay someone so much. So I've willingly took on an isolated pawn, but I'm looking at trying to get rid of it with d4 and attempting to open the bishop, uh, open the position. And I'm hoping my bishop is slightly better than white's bishop in the resulting play. Maybe I can get pressure against b2. Very slim advantages, but maybe there were something. It's an odd choice of rook. I don't know why white's keeping this rook on f1. I would have played rook fe1 there. So if I can play d4, c takes d4, and then take with a rook, maybe I can try to go after the b2 pawn, like rook b4 would be a threat. Rook d2, perhaps. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Advance the weakness. The isolated pawn. If c takes d4, rook takes d4, rook f3, I can play rook f4, or I could just move my queen. If rook, d, rook to e1 right now, I could play rook d2. They could respond with rook e2, though. I think rook e1, rook b4 would be more testing. I allow a check on e8 in that case, but my king's always escaping, and white's not going to be able to cook up a mating net with my king on the back rank, unless something really drastic happens. Okay, so rook b4, queen c3, rook takes b2, queen takes f6, take. Yeah, that's a bit better for me, so let's do it. Four minutes to three and a half, but it looks like I might win a pawn. What about queen c3, rook takes b2, queen c7? Ah no, f2 is hanging, so they can't get that ambitious yet. So on queen c3, rook takes b2, they could throw in a check. Rook takes e8, rook takes e8, king h7, but at that point they have to address their hanging queen and also that hanging pawn on f2. So something like queen c8 threatening rook h8 is too slow. Queen takes b2, or queen takes f2 rather. So they centralize instead. I think same issue for white though. So let's take. Just that mate threat. Mate in two, queen takes f2. Well, I guess the queen covers d5. But still, that's going to prevent their queen from coordinating on the back rank with their rook. That would end up on e8, hypothetically. If they now avert the mate threat somehow, like say they play f3, I might play king h7 as prophylaxis. Takes a sting out of rook e8. If they play rook f3 now, Probably queen g5. Maybe queen d8. Nah, queen d8, rook e1, or rook e8, rather. Not even that doesn't work for white, though. Queen d8, rook e8, queen takes, bishop takes, rook b1 is winning. So maybe queen d8, <laughs> as weird as that looks. It's also just queen g5, but on queen g5, I wonder if queen d6 is any good. Queen g5, queen d6, attacking the rook. It's a little bit annoying. I'm really tempted to play queen d8 right now. I think I'm going to do it. 
going to see if White blunders with Rook E8. I suspect he's going to see it, but I'm threatening a queen trade, so this move kind of comes with tempo. It doesn't allow that queen d6 annoyance. Queen e5 makes sense because it would hit the rook on e on b2 and also coordinate with the rook on e1. But I think something like rook d2 is fine against that. Two minutes to two and a half. I'm up 30 some seconds now. Let's pre move this. Not too many options for white other than trading queens and queen e5. It's pretty much has to be one of those two moves. Yeah, queen e5. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Maybe rook c8 next move. Just get out of any potential queen takes b8 ideas. So we've consolidated the extra pawn from the looks of it. Queen f4. Rook d1, we're just going to get a trade. Not that I hate trades right now, but queen g5 also seems pretty good. Yeah, let's do queen g5. So defending the rook on d2 and offering a trade. I want to keep my rook on the second rank. I think it's an annoyance for white there. In an endgame, I have to make sure that the b6 pawn doesn't drop off. It very well could on its current square. Okay, bishop to d7, but that hangs a bishop. All right, he resigned. Okay, so the critical moment in this game was when I played e5 and changed the pawn structure. I don't think white responded correctly to that because this move, rook c to e1, just looks dubious. There's no reason to play rook c to e1. It should be rook f e1 and put the other rook on d1. So he kind of gave me a uh, free opportunity to play d4 under optimal circumstances. Let's go back and have a look at that game. So Karo Khan, and I played this knight d7 variation, a favorite of Karpov's. And the idea is just to play knight f6, and should white take it, be able to replace it with the other knight, as you saw. Check. So, in fact, it's, it's a little weird, but the critical move here is knight g5. Theory says that this is white's best chance of getting an advantage, or at least that's what theory was uh, when I last checked this variation. So the point of knight g5 is that it's hard for black to chase this knight away. And white is creating some pressure on f7, so moves like bishop, f, uh, bishop to c4 would double attack that. So if black were to play h6 here, white can actually respond with knight e6. Great move. And if black takes it, queen h5 is Check. going to mate, white, uh, mate black very swiftly. G6, Check queen mate. takes g6. So after knight g5, uh, I believe, let me see if I can remember my theory now. I believe black is supposed to play just knight gf6. Is that how it goes? Knight gf6, bishop c4, e6, I think is the line. Yeah, that's right. And there's another line, bishop d3, after knight gf6. Because after bishop d3, if black plays h6, then knight e6 is again possible. This time due to Checkmate. bishop to g6 mate. So moving the knight again to g5 uh, creates some unexpected problems for black if they don't know the subtleties of this line, mainly that... The knight is attacking f7, but can't easily be booted away. So there is a line that goes knight gf6, bishop d3, e6. Uh, here I think it's knight g or knight 1 to f3. And if black plays h6 once again, then here white can play knight takes e6 as a sacrifice. And there's a famous game, 
Deep Blue versus Kasparov, where Kasparov played into this line. I believe he played Queen E7 now. And the computer just sacrificed this knight and ended up crushing him in like under 20 moves or something. It was like a miniature. Sad day for humanity. Um, so after knight 1 to f3, I think bishop d6 is much the better move. And uh, finally, after queen e2, it's safe for black to play h6. And then it goes knight e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4. And here there's quite a bit of theory. Knight f6 or queen c7. So... That's how uh, one of the critical main roads could go with knight g5. Knight f3 is perfectly fine. I just think that Check. the resulting positions are pretty easy for black to play. They're not that exciting. But as you saw, both sides were able to complete their development without any issues. Pawn play became uh, kind of the focal point of the middle game. White trying to stake, stake out territory here. I respond with a5, stopping white from expanding. Uh, both sides trying to like look for pawn breaks a little later on. I was talking about rook b8 and b5 eventually. I don't think it ever would have been that good. Um, so I don't think white can really count on much of an advantage here. I did mention that I thought the computer might believe white to be slightly better, and I guess we'll see coming up if that's the case. Let me just turn the engine on now. Hmm. Now the engine has it pretty much dead equal. 0.00. <laughs> 0, .00. 0. Not much to go by. It says I should play bishop d6. Not a move I considered here. Setting up a queen bishop battery and aligning against that pawn on h2. That's a cool idea. Maybe trying to get white to play something like f4 and knight e4, threatening knight d2, and knight takes g5 is bad for white. Yeah, I could absolutely see that because if white responds to the knight d2 threat like moves this rook out of the way, then take, and we're going to win a pawn from the looks of it. Well, I guess they could take b7 maybe, but somehow this seems suspicious for white. Yeah, check, check rook b8, go take this pawn. So bishop d6 on move 13 could have led to some nice possibilities perhaps. I played knight d5, then took with the knight. Yeah, knight takes or queen takes. I felt like knight takes might allow me to play that knight g6 move and offer a trade, although that never became important. I think I was speculating that the computer might prefer white by one-tenth of a pawn. Looks like I was pretty close. Rook f to d1. Yeah, knight f4 is the engine suggestion. I was always thinking about that move, but I just thought white would play bishop f1 if I did that. I didn't see what knight f4 would yield. So instead, rook f to d8. Rook a c1. h6, just a useful waiting move. Yeah, bishop f3. I played rook b8. Computer likes that. So rook a b8 is played not so much to immediately play b5, but at least to think about it um, and kind of menace that move. Gives white something to consider. Now knight e3. I didn't really want to take and allow white to take with the f-pawn. This is probably okay. Computer seems to think so. e5, strike back at the center. But I didn't see a good reason to trade willingly on e3, so I just backed the bishop up. Bishop g6. Now c takes. Yeah, interesting that the engine still prefers white a bit here. I thought e takes would be pretty much level. Unless white can do something drastic, like c4 is a drastic move. Willingly taking on an isolated pawn. This is kind of what I did later. Rook takes. Yeah, I don't know. I think black should be fine here. But maybe. Maybe white's activity counts for something. Here the bishop is better off than it was in the game on b5 for white. On b5 it looked good and it was defended, but it never did anything. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... It may be key for either side if they're hoping to prove an advantage to, at some point, make uh, an unorthodox decision, like taking on an isolated pawn and trying to open the position at a favorable moment. Hmm. Yeah, c4 would have been a, a good idea for white from the looks of it. I saw that move during the game, but I just kind of dismissed it. I thought, well, I can always take and play against that isolated pawn. 
But I can I can see why white would get certain play here. And it opens the diagonal for the bishop too. But white played bishop e2, I played b6, bishop b5. I thrust my queen in, more so just to give white something to think about. But also I was seeing if maybe they'd weaken their king side with g3. Uh, it might assist in playing e5 out here. Yeah, and I didn't like these moves that white made with the rook. Rook f1 and also this later rook c to e1. They just seem uncalled for. Like, this move just looks like white is seeing ghosts. I don't have any attack on f2 right now. I don't know why white would want to reinforce that pawn. I'll just play rook e1. Yeah, nothing to be afraid of. So rook f1, I played e5. Yeah, you see the eval. Nothing really going on. I think I spent too long on this move. I think if I'm going to play e5, I should play it faster. Like, spending two minutes and change to make that decision. I use a third of my time on that move. It's, that's not worth it. So poor time management for me right there. So e5, d, e, queen takes. Hmm. Lo and behold, the engine actually likes rook c to e1 here. Oh, no, it changes mine, rook f e1. I just don't get rook c to e1. I don't know why you wouldn't use this rook. And come here with tempo. And then do this. And have both rooks centralized. I'm still going to play d4 and try to liquidate, but that's better than having a rook here and uh, on e1 when I play d4. So here, queen f6, rook e3. Nevertheless, the engine thinks that white can hold the balance. Yeah, this move was a mistake by white, allowing rook b4. So had they played queen c3, prophylaxis against rook to b4. As you can see, it's zero straight across, dead equal. I still would have tried to create some problems for white, but not much going. Much to do about nothing, right? Yeah, it's a symmetrical position, practically. Same material distribution, very few imbalances. Maybe I can still try to play this move and attack b2. I might even be willing to accept double isolated pawns and another isolated pawn over here to do that. I don't know though. B3, maybe they can come here. Oh, I have bishop c2 though. Okay, attacking this. So it's equal but not yet drawn if white had found queen c3. So here white played rook fe1 and now rook b4 and it does appear that white's just going to lose a pawn now. Queen d5. It did seem like queen c3 might be a better try at least, even though I can play rook takes b2. Maybe this endgame offers white some saving chances. The pawn that I'm up is firmly blockaded at the moment, so I have to do something about that. <laughs> but it is a clear pawn. And note that if white tries Check. to go after it right away Check. by swinging their queen over, they're going to fall victim Check. to the back rank. Rook b1, check. Forcing bishop f1 and then bishop d3 is going to win the bishop in the game. So you see the effect of like black having played h6 in the middle game. I took a timeout to play that on move 17 and white hasn't moved any of these pawns yet. So they suffer a, a constant back rank issue. Like little things like that matter and you should uh, be thinking about that. Um, I would say for a lot of very low rated viewers, that's not something that you actively want to uh, try to do all the time. Uh, but I think if you're a bit higher rated, you can appreciate when moves like h6 or h3 or you know g6 or g3 are appropriate. And they're usually appropriate when the game has slowed down a bit and there's no clear plan available to either side. And a lot of chess games at higher levels are decided on who can make these constructive moves at the right moment and make more of them too. So that when the position becomes tactical and forcing, uh, you can look back and say that you set yourself up well for that. So white played queen d5. I grabbed on b2. So that attack on f2 slows white down because Check. as I was describing, Check. it might be nice for white to try to do something like this and threaten rook h8 mate, but they're never in time. Check. You know, like here I get Check. this in and white's going to get checkmated on the back rank once again. 
So I know it seems a little risky to leave rookie eight as an option available to white, but I always can bail with my king to h7, and there's not a good follow-up attack for white. So here white played rook f3, and ah, queen d8, best move according to the engine. Felt a little strange to play, move the queen to its original position. But it's tactically justified, as I was saying, if white Check. plays rook e8, looking to try to win a queen for a rook and bishop, then they're in for a Check. rude awakening after rook b1. And again, that back rank comes to tell. I just wanted to avoid queen g5, queen d6. That was the only thing I was trying to do with queen d8 that queen g5 didn't offer. Maybe I can play this way. Lose this pawn, go on the attack. Okay. Yeah, kind of a lot to see, though, in, uh, in some time pressure. Huh, black is winning here, really. If queen takes a5, defending here, rook Check. takes e1, queen takes e1. Oh, just rook b1. Okay, and I'm getting at them on the back rank. I like that line. That's cool. Queen g5, queen d6, rook c8, and if white takes, we're getting in rook c1, and <laughs> big issues for white. Yeah, queen b8 doesn't change much. Again, I'm just moving this over. White can't take my rook. They're getting mated or losing their queen at the very least. Check. Like so. Huh, nifty variation right there. But I played queen d8. They went queen e5, hitting my rook on b2. Rook d2. It's just hard for white to create anything direct. I guess f7 is a bit weak, but they can't put a bishop on c4 now, thanks to my rook guarding that square. So you see white had to waste time playing h3 at a moment where maybe they would have preferred to play some attacking move. So rook c8, queen f4, then I just offered a queen trade, and here white blundered the game away, bishop d7. But I think with my minute edge plus the pawn advantage and a pretty easy position to play. It's it's going to be a win for black. If we had more time on the clock, I mean, it would be instructive to see how black would win a position like this. Eventually, I'd be hoping to make use of my extra pawn over here, but it's going to take time. Just thinking what I would do to try to win this position. I mean, I'd like to go attack a4, maybe double the rooks up on the second rank, try to tie white down to the defense of f2. At some point, play rook a2 and bishop c2, but that takes a lot of organization. I probably got to like hide my king, make sure white can't check me. Maybe play f6 later. Meanwhile, I'm sure white can do something in reply to gain some counterplay. It feels like black ought to be able to win this position, though. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Uh, I think drop stream zero played a reasonable game with the white pieces. Uh, I think they struggled to find a plan, but in fairness, I didn't find much either for black. I was just playing the position. Um, I think if you're playing this line from the white side, you should look towards knight g5. That's the more promising option against knight d7. I think white's major mistake was their rook placement. This move rook f1 on move number 23, and also rook c to e1 on move 25. They might not register on the computer so much, but to a to a human, uh, these moves look strange, and I think they are concessions from white. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.